Hello Infoperson, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss a somewhat recent study that kind of attempts to do the unthinkable, or I guess something that scientists have been trying to do for a very long time. It tries to connect the ideas behind Einsteinian relativity with the concepts from quantum physics, and in some sense succeeds to some extent. Or to be more exact, this new study basically tries to explain gravity using quantum effects. Something that scientists have been trying to do for decades now, and something we believe one day will help us explain the entire universe once and for all. And so let's discuss this new study in a little bit more detail and talk about what this all means and why this is important. This is a study by Daniel Carney and his team on the quantum mechanics of entropic forces. But I guess let's start with the problem first. So essentially here, what is it that the researchers are trying to achieve and why is it an issue? And to some extent, this relates to the idea known as theory of everything, with this Venn diagram trying to illustrate what this means. And that's because in modern physics, we have these individual theories that are able to explain certain parts of the universe extremely well, but they don't actually seem to connect. Or to be more exact, they don't really seem to have anything that binds them in any way. For example, on the one side, we have these famous propositions by Albert Einstein. And so here, our understanding of gravity is based entirely on general theory of relativity, which combines special relativity and modifies the ideas behind time and space to then present us with how the universe seems to work when there are massive bodies around. And we know that general relativity so far has been basically proven to be entirely correct. It's an extremely elegant theory. It also explains motions of various bodies in the entire universe and can generally explain most of the cosmology with some very minor exceptions. One such exception is black holes and specifically what happens inside black holes once you pass the event horizon. And that's because here, once you reach what's known as gravitational singularity, nothing really makes any more sense. It also doesn't really explain the ideas known as dark matter and dark energy or their relation to the famous cosmological constant. So essentially, it's an amazing theory, but it doesn't explain everything. And more importantly, we actually don't really know how or even why gravity seems to work. But this is where other fields try to pitch in. For example, in particle physics, there is an attempt to explain gravity through the particle known as graviton. But out of all predicted particles, this is one that's never been observed anywhere. And so it's not entirely clear if it even exists. Nevertheless, all of these particles can be explained by the idea known as the quantum field theory, a framework based on quantum mechanics that actually does combine certain Einsteinian principles with quantum mechanics. And because so far it made sense in most cases, for many decades now, researchers have been trying to discover how to possibly describe gravity according to these principles as well, or essentially how to use quantum mechanics to try to explain gravitational effects. And the model that was supposed to do this is known as the non-relativistic quantum gravity. But unfortunately, this model is still in its infancy and it's actually still unable to explain gravity by using quantum physics. And so essentially what we're left with is kind of like two separate theories, or essentially kind of like two sides of the universe. On the one side, we have everything governed by quantum physics, and here we can actually explain pretty much everything, with various experiments proving this over time. But on the other side, we have gravitational effects and Einsteinian principles that also have been proven many times and also make a lot of sense, but there's basically no connection between them that explains everything all at once. There is no theory of everything. And especially because gravity is really the only interaction or the only force that has not been fully explained or I guess in some sense, has not been explained at all. But if we do want to explain the modern universe one day, we have to find this theory of everything. We have to find an explanation that does not ignore gravitational and quantum effects and can basically explain four fundamental forces all at once. Right now, we can only explain three forces. The electromagnetic force, the strong force, and the weak force. These are the forces explained by quantum mechanics. And while for many years, researchers have always believed that we can probably find a way to explain this by using black holes. And that's because, once again, black holes seem to represent this perfect environment. Environment where gravitational effects, as predicted by Einstein, suddenly transform into something entirely different. And once we understand what happens inside black holes, we can then explain the first moments of the universe right after the Big Bang, and thus explain the entire universe possibly all at once. 
But because gravitational theories collapse inside black holes, here it is highlighted that our theories are just incomplete, with the most likely explanation coming out of the quantum realm and not out of some new physics. And so the question is of course, so what exactly is going on and how can we possibly explain any of this? But here, even without looking at these extreme examples like black holes, we can basically see the same issues right here on Earth. Like for example right now, all of us are attracted to planet Earth through the force of gravity. But the reason we're not falling through Earth, and the reason I'm basically sitting in my chair right now, is because of quantum effects, and specifically electromagnetic forces, that prevent my molecules from falling through the chair and from falling into the planet. And though here most of these phenomena could be explained through particles, gravity cannot. We cannot explain what's happening with gravity. And so the scientists behind this recent study decided to approach this a little bit differently. They actually decided to approach this as a quantum problem and not a problem of particles. And specifically, as the title implies, as the concept of rearranging of information produced by entropy itself. Now the study itself is pretty complex and there's a lot of different terminology that's super advanced, but I'm going to try to Eli 5 or explain it to you like I'm 5, making sure that everything is more or less comprehensible. With this idea actually being pretty old. It was originally put forward back in 1995 and it took approximately 30 years to develop it into this study. You can find the original study by Ted Jacobson on the thermodynamics of space-time in the description. Except that this time researchers did a pretty good job explaining this, both mathematically and conceptually, and even present us with a few ways we can actually test this experimentally. Which is why I wanted to talk about this in more detail. But the main point is to derive equations for gravity using this entropic force. The force researchers behind this paper believe is responsible for gravity. But first let's start with some analogies just so that it makes sense. Imagine two soccer balls. In classical physics we believe these balls pull on each other using gravity because there might be some kind of a particle between them such as graviton. As I mentioned before, since gravitons have never been discovered, right now this is super hypothetical. But what if there's no particle and no string and instead the space between these two balls is actually full of tiny tiny switches in this case something you might have heard of before, qubits. Tiny quantum interactions that possess their own wavelengths and their own frequencies and pop in and out of existence at all times. Ok, but how would this create gravity? Ok, let's imagine this in a slightly different way. Let's take these two soccer balls and put them into a huge ball pit. In this case, inside this ball pit, every one of these balls is one of these qubits. And once you put these balls inside the ball pit, every one of these qubits will get rearranged and will actually, to some extent, suddenly feel a little bit uncomfortable. In more scientific terms, it's not going to have its lowest energy. But because these qubits want to have their lowest energy, they will try to continuously rearrange themselves, which will actually result in a kind of a push on the larger object. In this case, that soccer ball. And so here, this first explanation implies that gravity is basically this force, this push, that these soccer balls feel inside the ball pit as the tiny balls around them try to push them away. And that's because all of the qubits near the soccer balls, or all of the smaller balls, suddenly feel affected by them and no longer contain their relaxed state, which forces them to produce a bit of a push. In this case, scientists explain this as qubits just not wanting to change. They want to have their lowest state. And so in order to relax, these qubits will then push these objects, very likely from several sides, making the overall force appear as gravity. In this particular study, they actually do provide formula that explain this pretty well. And specifically, they show mathematically that if you have a bunch of these qubits arranged in a specific way, the overall push they produce seems to actually follow Newtonian laws of gravity, even telling us how strong the push is and how the objects will behave depending on the total energy. Now, the explanation itself is a bit more complex and does involve local and non-local effects, but the overall idea is the same. Gravity seems to be the result of quantum interactions and basically this quantum foam not wanting to be disturbed. Ok, as I was actually thinking about this and as I was kind of getting hungry, I came up with another analogy in case it's still not clear. Once again we have two soccer balls. But now let's not put them inside a ball pit, let's actually place them on an imaginary floor that contains a bunch of popcorn kernels, specifically excited popcorn kernels, that are constantly popping and jiggling because there's also a really large heat lamp above them that heats them up and causes them to pop. In this case, each of these individual popcorn kernels is kind of like this qubit. 
with this entire floor of popcorn basically being the heat bath. But when you place the soccer ball on the floor, they basically cover some of these popcorn kernels and also press on them, causing them to become less bouncy, or in more scientific terms, causing them to change their state and their frequency. Something that these popcorns don't actually want. They want to be bouncy and they want to continuously pop because that's their natural state. I mean, in our example, this is because of that heat lamp, but in the universe, this is just the nature of quantum foam. It wants to continuously pop. And if two balls are very close to each other, the area between them is much smaller. And so the popcorns on the edge of the ball will actually end up pushing these balls together in order to create more space for many of these kernels to become bouncy once again. And so here, these quantum effects try to minimize the energy by forcing these two objects to come close together in order to create the most energetic effect. And once again, all of this can be explained through Newtonian law of gravity. But though this is a cool proposition, how do you actually test this? Well, here scientists do propose at least a few experiments. For example, here we can test for wobbliness of gravity. Since this is based on qubits, and since we know qubits tend to jiggle around and tend to disappear and reappear, here by measuring gravity extremely accurately, we could maybe detect this wobbliness, thus confirming this idea. In other words, if we actually discover that gravity is not super stable and actually appears kind of jittery or almost like a wave, even if these changes are barely detectable, it would actually imply that gravity might be quantum after all. Likewise, if this is a quantum effect, here gravity might also be able to create some kind of a quantum link. Here we're talking about a link between these two soccer balls, implying that gravity could produce additional effects not predicted by other theories. And though in theory this could explain dark matter or why we're seeing more gravity than we should, this is obviously just an early proposition. With additional experiments suggesting that these soccer balls or these larger objects should also start producing less quantum effects if surrounded by this quantum foam. Or in other words, there might be at least three separate experimental ways this could be proven in the future. And according to the scientists behind this paper, some of these experiments are already planned and are already being developed. For example, future experiments are going to be using the radioactive atoms of cesium in order to measure superposition and in order to discover changes in the quantum effects as proposed by this hypothesis. But because this is a new paper and because there are no experiments conducted yet, we obviously have no idea if this is just an intriguing hypothesis or if the researchers behind the study are actually onto something after all. As a matter of fact, because this is so complex and because only a handful of researchers can even conduct these experiments, it will probably take a while before we can prove this or disprove this just to see if gravity could actually be explained through these quantum effects after all. But because this is so intriguing, we'll definitely come back and talk more about this once there are some additional discoveries. And so until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who wasn't about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying a wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.